in this video we are going to continue to look at velocity time graphs. We started looking at velocity time graphs in the previous video. We're going to look at another example in this video. So the example is describe the motion that resulted in the following velocity time graph by stating the initial velocity, final velocity, displacement, acceleration and time taken. And the graph is this graph here. So this is sort of the opposite to the previous question, the one we looked at in the previous video, because in that video we were given a description of motion and we had to draw the resulting velocity time graph. We're kind of doing the opposite here, we're working backwards, we've been given the graph, we need to describe the motion by finding out these five SUVAT variables. So. Let's just have a quick look at it. Well, it looks pretty straightforward because it's just a straight line. In the previous video, it was a um, kind of line with a kink in it. In this one, it's just a straight line, but it's maybe not as simple as it seems. So the velocity is constantly decreasing. It starts at five meters per second, but it's constantly decreasing from there and it even gets negative. So after two seconds, it gets to zero on the velocity axis so that means that it had no velocity and then it got negative which if you remember means it actually started moving back in the direction it came from so it's completely changed direction we're assuming it's one dimensional motion so something just moving in a line but it was moving along that line in one direction but after two seconds it changed direction and started moving back the other way let's try and get some actual figures for this so We'll just start by drawing this dotted line so we can see exactly where the graph comes to an end at six seconds. And we're gonna need this later and uh, we'll see why. So key fact is displacement equals area above the T axis minus area below the T axis. So we're gonna need this to find displacement, which we are asked for. Now this is slightly different to the key fact in the previous video where we said that the area underneath the curve or between the curve and the t-axis was the distance traveled. Now that is still true and it would be true here if we found the total area so the area of the two triangles the one above the curve and the one below so the one above the axis and below the axis and we added those up we get the total distance traveled that's true but that's not the same as displacement because if the curve goes below the time axis that means the velocity has got a negative which means the thing is moving back in the direction it came so it's actually getting closer to the start point which means the displacement is actually getting smaller as it gets back towards the start point because if you remember if I walk five meters off the spot turn around 180 degrees and walk five meters back then because I'm back to where I started my displacement is zero but my distance traveled will be 10 meters so displacement distance they're not always the same thing so if we want to get displacement then we need to subtract the part below the axis from the part above the axis because the part below the axis is where it was actually moving back towards where it started so if the area was the exact same that would mean that it had moved back the same distance that it had moved forward and therefore when we subtracted the two we'd get zero which is what we would expect but the area is actually bigger so we're not going to get zero but um we'll look at this in a few minutes let's start by just filling in this table with the information we, we know straight away. So we want to find the five variables, S, U, V, A, and T, that's what we're asked for. Well, U is the initial velocity. We just read it right off the graph. When time is zero, at the origin, velocity is five. Similarly, V, the final velocity is minus 10. We can just read that right off the graph. And T, the time taken, is six seconds. So the line just goes over six seconds. Again, we can read that straight from the graph. So it's only S and A that are tricky. So let's think about A first. So we want the acceleration. Now this is the rate of change of the velocity. So how quickly or slowly was the velocity changing? Specifically, it's how much did the velocity change over a given second. So every second, how much is the velocity changing by? Well, let's look at the graph. We can see this red line here on the graph on the time axis. It's two seconds. So over this two seconds, 
the velocity went from 5 to 0, so it changed by 5 seconds. So we can see that here, so this triangle shows us that over 2 seconds the velocity changes by 5. But this is a straight line, so it's got a constant rate of change, so we can say therefore that over 1 second it must have changed by 2.5. We can actually show that if we draw a line going across here for going the length of one second, then you cross the time axis, then you can see that we've gone 2.5 down the velocity axis. So this is very similar. Essentially all we're doing is calculating the rate of change or the slope of this line because acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. So if you have a velocity that's represented by a straight line, you can calculate its slope to get its acceleration. So the slope is 2.5, but the acceleration, remember, is minus 2.5 because the velocity is actually decreasing by 2.5 meters per second every second because the line is sloping down. So the velocity is getting more and more negative or decreasing. So we have to have a minus acceleration. And then we just need S. So, but using the key fact, S isn't so bad. It's the displacement which is the area above the t-axis minus the area below the t-axis and you just want to remember this key fact don't worry about too much why this is the case well we talked about it a little earlier but if you're unclear at all don't worry too much about it just remember it the displacement is area above t-axis minus area below t-axis so that's the blue area minus the orangey beige area we have here so let's just do that calculation for s, we have to do 2 times 5 divided by 2. Why is it 2 times 5? Well, I'm calculating the area of the upper triangle. It's got side lengths 2 and 5, and it's a right angle triangle. So I do 2 times 5, and then I divide by 2. And then the lower triangle is also a right angle triangle. It has side lengths 4 and 10, you can see. So we go from 2 to 6 on the time axis, so that's 4. And then we go from 0 down to minus 10. So that's side length 10 on the velocity axis. So we do 4 times 10. And once again, to get the area, we have to divide by 2 because it's a right angle triangle. So this is 5 minus 20 if you do these calculations, which is minus 15. So we have minus 15 for S. So that's minus 15 meters. And it is a negative number because it's a displacement. So it's not just a distance traveled. It's actually displacement, so essentially what's happened is the thing has moved away from the point it started at, but then changed direction and started moving back to this point. And then it's actually continued in this direction for longer, so it's gone beyond this point and started moving past the point in the opposite direction, which is the negative direction. So it's actually ended up moving 15 meters away from the point, but in the negative direction, even though originally it was moving in the positive direction. So hopefully that makes sense and that is how you can use a velocity time graph to find out information about the motion.